Hey guys, this is Michael from Conquer Chemistry. In this video, we'll be talking about how to balance chemical equations. We'll first go over the steps, then we'll look at three examples progressing from easy to harder. And we'll work through these examples with these steps. So the first step, we're going to balance the element that only appears in one reactant and one product. Now let's look at this example and find an element that only appears in one reactant and one product. An example of that is carbon. Carbon only appears in this one reactant and it only appears in this one product. We could have also looked at hydrogens because hydrogen only appears in one reactant and one product. Element that would have not been good to start with is oxygen because you can see here oxygen appears in multiple products. So let's start with carbon. We see we have two carbons here and we have one carbon here. So I need to put a coefficient of two in front to make it so I have two carbons on this side as well. And I'm gonna put a coefficient of one here so this bring, gives us two carbons on each side. Great. So if I, I put a uh, next we let, let's see next we have we can either balance the oxygens or we could balance the hydrogens. Um, oxygens is in multiple products, so I'm I'm going to leave that to the very end. Let's balance the hydrogens. We have four hydrogens on the left side, and we currently have two hydrogens on the right side. So that means I need a coefficient of two right here to give us four hydrogens on both sides. Now, finally, I can balance the number of oxygens. So let's see how many oxygens we have in, to in total on the right side, on the product side. So here we have four oxygens from the CO2, and then we have two oxygens from the H2O. So in total, that gives us six oxygens. And we have two oxygens on the left-hand side. That means we're going to need a coefficient of three right here. All right, so we just went through step one, two, and three. Now, step number four is double check if our equation is balanced or not. So let's go do each element and double check. We have two carbons on the left and two carbons on the right. We have four hydrogens on the left, four hydrogens on the right. And we have six oxygens here. Uh, we have four oxygen here plus the two oxygen here. So in total, we have six. Great, so that, that everything is balanced. Moving on to a slightly more difficult example. Again, first step, we're going to want to find the element that's only in one reactant and one product. Let's see, what can we do? We can do carbon. Carbon's in this, react this reactant, it's in this product. We could also do hydrogen. So let's switch it up. Let's do hydrogen this time. How many hydrogens do we have uh, do we have on the left side, on the reactant side? So you have five right here, plus the one right here. So in total, I have six oxygens, sorry, six hydrogens on the left-hand side, and two on the right-hand side. So that means I'm going to have to put a coefficient of three here, because three times two is six, and I'm going to put a coefficient of one. So now I have six oxygens, hydrogens, on both sides. Next, let's do balance the number of carbons. Here I have two carbons, and then right here I have one carbon, so I'm going to have to put a coefficient of two here. Next, let's balance the number of oxygens. There's a total of four oxygens over here because it's two times two, and then a total of three oxygens from the water because it's three times one. So this gives a total of seven oxygens on the right hand side. So that means we need seven oxygens on the left hand side. This guy is going to contribute one oxygen and it's going to stay one because we do not want to change this coefficient. If we change that coefficient then we need to change these coefficients as well. So if that's contributing one for the total to be seven on the left hand side it means O2 would have to contribute six oxygens because that would give us a total of seven. For O2 to contribute six oxygen, this coefficient needs to be three. Let's do one final example, and this one's gonna be a little bit difficult, but I think you'll get it. Let's go do the same steps. We're gonna find the element that appears in only one reactant and one product. Let's pick around a little bit. Let's say, let's start with sodium. Sodium's only in this reactant, and it's only in this product. We have two sodiums here, we have one sodium here, 
So that means we need a total, we need two sodium, and then we're going to put a coefficient of one here. But because we put the two here, we made it so we have two CLs. So let's go and change the number of CLs on the other side. We currently have one CL here, so then that means we need a two here. Then we change the number of hydrogens. So I have two hydrogens now here, and I have two hydrogens here. So that's good. Let's put a let's put a coefficient of one here. Okay, now let's take a look at the sulfurs. I have one sulfur on the right hand side, and I have one sulfur on the left hand side. So good. Uh, I just need a coefficient of one here. Lastly, let's balance the number of oxygens. I have I have four oxygens here. It's one times four, and then I have two oxygens here. 1 times 2, 1 oxygen here, and then let's, for the total on the left hand side to be 4, it will require me to have only 1 oxygen here. But what number can I put in front of here to make it so it equals to 1? And it's going to be 1 half, because 1 half times 2 it's 1. And it's okay to have fractions in the middle as long as in the end, we get back the whole numbers. So if it if there is a fraction, that means we have to multiply all the coefficients by a number. Usually, a number is two or three, so then we get whole numbers. In this case, we're going to multiply everything by two because that's going to give us a whole number of one. So we multiply everything by two, and we get four, two, two, one, two and four and let's double check that we have a balanced equation we have four sodiums on the left hand side two times two four sodiums on the right hand side we have four chlorines here four chlorines on the other side as well two sulfurs two times one two sulfurs here two times one uh two nope four hydrogens four hydrogens and then lastly Let's check that the number of oxygens are balanced. We have four oxygens here, two times two. We have two oxygens here. We have two oxygens here, one times two. So that means in total we have four plus two plus two is eight oxygens. And then on the other side, it's gonna be two times four, leaving us with eight oxygens. So num all the elements are the, the same on both sides, I mean this equation is balanced. And that's it. Hopefully this video helped. If you want to take a look at the transcript or want additional practice prompts, check the link below. And if you liked this, this video, you thought it's helpful, like the video, subscribe, because throughout the semester I'll be posting up all types of videos that will help you conquer chemistry. Until next time.